Nicholas says that there's a Who's fine. Nicholas? Nicholas, Nicholas Petit Frere, your teammate. Yeah. He says there's a fine for too many questions in the offensive line room. Has he been fined a lot this year? Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, Nick should be discussing the, our fine system, and that will probably turn into a fine. <laughs> is he a guy who likes to ask a lot of questions, though? Um, yeah, I think, you know, our room is, we have a, I think our room is, we, we do a good job of keeping it light with the guys that are in there, but uh, at the same time, when we're, when guys, we're in there to learn, and we're in there to work on our techniques, and um, I don't think anybody should ever feel uncomfortable asking a question. So he does a great job asking questions, but a lot of guys do, too. Dislocate a finger or something on the first play the other night. And I'm not here to disclose injuries, <laughs> but um, clearly something was bothering you. How frustrating! Was I had it a, that I had a, I had a, something on my something on my finger that came out, and uh, <laughs> I had to do a couple plays with one hand. And we went in there, and well, we had a great training staff, and uh, they they put it together or whatever it was. And I went back in and and did the plays I needed to do. You still got a couple of weeks to go, but how's this camp been as far as getting you primed and ready for the start of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think every day um, is being – got to do your best to be as diligent every single day. You get like 25 practices or however many it's been since we've been here, and uh, it gets redundant. It seems like Groundhog's Day every single day, and it's your job as a professional to make sure you work on that 1% every single day. So uh, it's a difficult thing to do because, you know, the practices get long. and they're, It's hot out here, and – and everything, but I think every day, you know, I'm getting better towards uh, where I need to be at week one. And I think it's been a relatively consistent camp. We got some really good talent on the other side of the ball that I'm going against, so um, I'm, I'm confident. As you spend more, more years in the league, do you find yourself using more tricks and more things that maybe wily veterans know about that young guys don't to get the job done? There's things you can do in certain situations. I think. Um, when people start learning tricks, especially in offensive line, they tend to kind of go a little overboard with it. Like, I'm going to do this all the time and make it my fastball. Uh, my goal in camp, like, I have my, my change-ups that I like to do that have, have been uh, really good for me uh, in the past. So I, I have those, and I sharpen those up when, when the time is right, whether it's doing one-on-ones or in the run game in certain situations. Uh, but for me, in these situations, going against a guy like Bud and Harold and Ola and uh, Weave, it's um, – it's good to work on the fastball, the right technique that they want you to do. There's going to be times when you get yourself in a pinch and you know you're out leveraged in a lot of ways and you have to do a couple of those wily things you were speaking of. But um, in, in practice, for me, it's really about getting those fundamentals th th done the right way. And then in, in the game, that's where you can um, you know, do a couple of things to help you out here and there. Bud giving you some pretty good looks out there. Yeah, Bud's a stud. I think um, you know, it's a really good example of – uh, two guys going out of every single day, and uh, we're both learning each other every single play. And so, you know, there's days I get the best of him and vice versa. So uh, it's been a – I've been very fortunate to go against Bud this camp. Been uh, for, Just for myself and my growth and, um, and continuing to try to get better in year nine, uh, he's an explosive and powerful player, and it gives me a great opportunity every single day. How much of a difference do you notice in him from last year when he was coming off the knee? Yeah, he's, he just – he seems – he seems like it, you know. He's he's going, so I'm, I'm I'm excited for him and you know us both going through the same injury last year and uh, both having our ups and downs throughout the season. Uh, it's nice to get out there and um, both of us feel good playing. Taylor, you hear a lot about O line continuity, and this sure. is the first time in a while where you've had a couple positions where it seems like guys are fighting for it, even shuffling spots today. Are you comfortable with where the continuity is right now and that you'll be where you need to be on September 11th? Yeah, I think uh, every single day, regardless of who they put in there or who, who's in the game, there's a standard that this O-line has, and we're, we're graded on three separate things. And I think every single guy on this roster put into this situation, regardless of talent level, is going to fill those three things. And I think that's a huge change um, that we've had, especially since Vrabel and Keith have been here. What are those three things? I can't tell you. That's, an, that's interior stuff, baby. That's a need-to-know basis. That's a fine for both of you. You disappointed J.J. Watt's not going to be here this week? A little bit, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a stud player, and uh, people people get on him. I mean, I've had my, you know, my rants on busting with the boys about not liking him, and uh, he's this and he's that. But at the end of the day, he's a stud football player, and it would have been really um, a good thing for me to go against him. But they got, they got, they got studs over there. You know, they got some good players, so – um, another opportunity this week. I think we handled uh, Tampa Bay coming in uh, the right way. I think the guys were there, and it's you know we talked about this in the beginning of camp how no one really likes joint practices. None of the players go in there and go yes, because it's 
football with no rules. You know, you swing. It's not like you're kicked out. Of the game. You're going. You know, so um, you know I'm, uh, these guys. We're going to handle it the same way we handled it with Tampa Bay and go in there with an attitude to get better. And um, you know, it's unfortunate he's not going to be there, but whatever he's doing, I'm sure it's important. Ask, but you got yeah, two, go and take a minute. On you that. got two uh, two series the other night. Do you want to play more this week, especially after last year? You've talked about being healthy and going. Do you want to see significant action Saturday night, or how, how do you feel about that? I'll do whatever Vrabel wants me to do. <laughs> whatever Vrabel and John decide they want me to do, I will gladly and I will gladly do that. How do you feel like the group as a whole maybe is from a from a readiness standpoint for the regular season, and, and what maybe would you like to do here the last couple of weeks before before you get going? Um, I think the great group has been doing a great job. You know, we have big emphasis on ball disruption. Um, this last preseason game, you know, we got some hands on some pass breakups. We got some forced fumbles. Um, great tackling by my, my boy Kalu. Um, as overall, we had good communication, and so far, I think we've been doing a great job. Did you get out of Saturday what you were looking? <laughs> A few reps. Yeah, you know, I got my, I got a couple of tackles. You know, I got my body on uh, some of the running backs, and you know, saw some looks that I wanted to see live action, and I was able to get those. What have you seen from um, Lonnie Johnson since he came in? I remember he had like a, a pick in his first practice, uh, made some nice plays in the preseason game. How have you seen him acclimate himself with? It kind of being closer than to training camp. Yeah, I mean, he got here and um, he was ready to learn. You know, he he's a guy that he he came out the same time I did. I trained with him a little bit down in Florida, and so I knew a little bit him a little bit from there. But I mean, fast kid, athletic kid, and smart kid. I mean, he's came in here. We thrown a lot at him, and he's been able to pick a lot up. Some time early on here in camp was was that frustrating for you when, when you're looking to try and build on what you did last year? Yeah, it's frustrating. Um, but then again, you know, I want to make sure I'm fully healthy. I don't want to, you know, get out here and make sure I re-injure something or you know have any setbacks. So, um, and and I was able to be out here the last couple of weeks and able to get some reps versus the Bucks and then um, be out there in live action. With what Kyler and they were able to do to you guys week one last year, does that add any excitement to, to getting them out here on the practice field this week? Yeah, definitely. I mean, having a quarterback that can move around, run around like that. And a, a spread offense that can throw the ball and guy, receivers can run. I mean, we had a, a great mix this preseason. We got the Ravens, who are big, you know, two tight end sets, run the ball. And then you go to the Bucks, who are, you know, similar to how we are with motions and all that stuff. And now we're about to be a, a passing team we're going to go against. So it's going to be a great, pra uh, pra great practice for us to go against. What do you tell young guys? <clears throat> Obviously, cuts you know, going on, there'll be a lot more next week. What do you tell young guys that are in the room who, who obviously know what's coming to kind of focus and not? Pay attention to him. Is that is that hard to do? You think? Yeah, I mean it's definitely difficult, but guys are always you know they're thinking you think about it, so you can't act like it's not there. But I mean we just tell our guys to keep competing and keep playing. Like I mean no matter what's going on, if you just full go, keep learning, keep listening. I mean it's not just the Titans that are looking at you. There's other teams around the league that are looking at you. So just do it do it for your teammates and then do it for yourself and with go out there and finish. How important is this week for that? It's a great, it's a great week. I mean, it's great importance for that. I mean, guys, like guys got cut this morning, and there's guys that are, you know, looking around the room and seeing it. So, I mean, you just got to make sure that as a leader, that we can build that room up, make sure guys that are buying in. So, if that last cuts do happen, you know, guys have put their best stuff on film late. How's camp been as far as getting your prime for the for the season? I don't know whether <laughs> do, you, do you guys still hit a wall in camp with the way the schedule is now, the regeneration days, or how do how, how you think the team has managed it as a whole? I think, it's been, I think it's been a great camp. I mean, I feel like we had the most breaks, you know, we've had during camp than I had, I mean, since I've been here as far as, you know, uh, coach taking care of us, making sure that we have certain uh, tempos in practice where, you know, guy who might not be full goal, you might be jogged through for this period. Um, but I think we've done a great job preparing for, um, for the season to start. I mean, I we haven't had as much injuries as we had last year going into the season. I know we had a lot during the season. We want to make sure that we minimize that. So you physically know this the difference with how they're kind of managing things? Yeah, you, you can tell the difference. I mean, I feel like last year it was, it was a little bit longer days, a little bit more, more contact days. Um, and this year it's more, more managing. And it, I think you're doing a great job because we're still out, you know, we're still out here working, still out here getting all the physical stuff that we need to get done that we're getting accomplished. How big has that been for both sides of the ball just generally to have that opportunity to build consistently? consistency day to day? It's very big. I mean, we want to stack our days. We want to stack, stack victories and stack Ws, um, whether that's in the game or whether that's just daily, day to day basis and just throughout practice. Leo Jackson returned today, but you know, obviously missed a lot of time. Do you, do you, <clears throat> when you see a rookie miss so much time, is there anything you feel like as an older player that you, that you want or need to say to a guy like that just to 
stay patient. Yeah. And, and um, like that. For that, it's just you know get healthy and then just stay in the playbook because when you get back, you know you can't be you can't be far behind. You got to be right where we are um, as far as details and what we're doing as a scheme wise. Um, but for that, you know, he's got to make sure you just get get back healthy and then make sure you're just not falling behind. Yeah, you know, we went back in the red zone, um, which was, I thought, good. You know, those, that's critical. Talked about how much of the game is spent in red zone in two minutes. So we got both of those in there today. Um, you know, worked in some heat. I thought, you know, continuing to work on our conditioning, which is critical. Uh, I asked Nicholas uh, T. Burrow about just the versatility, playing left side and right side. And he said, you can't have any complications with the NFL. How impressed have you been with him? how he's able to work I think that that's um, something that we're always looking for is that you have some versatility and uh, flexibility to, to play more than one position. Um, Nick's shown that and then there's been some other guys that you know young guys that have been able to do that. Um, you know Rogers you know doing that as well. Um, Chig's you know learning multiple positions of the tight end you know responsibilities. Similar lines, uh, Dylan kind of in a situation where you're able to use his versatility, get him some work at guard and all? Yep, yep, just trying to shuffle guys around. Just really just trying to shuffle guys around and see, you know, we've got had some guys out um, and just trying to figure out where, where guys are going to be best served for themselves and for us. What specifically are you going to be looking at this week as well as in the game for the right tackle spot? Well, always just seeing how they protect. And, you know, I mean, we have to be able to protect our quarterback and, and the guy with the ball. You know whether that's the running back, but especially the the, the quarterback. Um, you know when you talk about linemen in general, it's it's how they function through, you know, movement and post snap and where their their awareness is to to be able to work to certain guys. You know things are changing. The center's making making calls, and that happens pretty quickly. How they process that, their level of, of finish. Um, and, and how instinctive they can be when, when things start moving. Anything happen, could happen this week that could change your mind from which way you're leaning either way right now? I mean, just, you know, guys playing well. You know what I mean? Guys playing well and, you know, continuing to improve, I think, is something that, that I'll always look for, um, that, that we're continuing to show improvement. Well, you said, mate, there's some things a little bit different against, uh, you know, this week against Arizona. What, what might those practices look like over your go? Where you go both days like you did last time. Yeah, um, we'll probably we'll you know we'll only practice against them on Wednesday, you know. So, um, you know, just from a, a health standpoint, you know, Cliff and I decided that that was best for our football teams at this point in time. Um, a lot of good one one on one work, you know, receivers and DBs, and you know, getting some pass rush in, getting some seven on seven. Um, and then we'll split up. We'll do some work um, against ourselves, you know, Tennessee on Tennessee, and then we'll come back together for two minutes. What's that doing to you Thursday? You have, your right, you have your own practice out here. Yeah, Thursday. you know, I just reworked the, the schedule uh, or the script, you know, and how probably just do some call it so that, you know, the guys don't have to go back and script or, you know, just call it out, call it team situations and um, try to identify things that I think we need um, specifically. Uh, for Thursday. What's, uh, you're, you're, I guess, a week away from final roster cuts. How, how much do you tell guys, don't worry about it? Do you notice guys' nerves I, a little bit more? Or? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, we just played a game. We came in, made corrections, and, you know, looked like everybody that was available uh, was out there trying to work and uh, compete. Yeah, I mean, I just, just you don't really want to start counting. You know, I just want to see them do things that are going to, you know, force them to, to be on this football team. So, you know, now is not the time to start counting. There's a lot of practices and, and evaluations left. How much has Racy improved as a route runner beyond just a deep post or a go route? I mean, I think he's improved in a lot of facets. I think he's more comfortable uh, just in the, the verbiage and the terminology and where he's lining up. I mean, there, there's a lot to it, and so I think he's gotten a lot more comfortable in just, you know, understanding where he fits and um, it, just overall in the receiver and special teams. And so we just have to keep improving and, you know, just try to go up and get the ball. You know, the other night I just, you know, the thing we told him was that he's got to try to go up and attack it. Looked like he kind of 
you know, those are hard to catch underhand when, it, when you're, you know, guys are on body. So just go up and, and try to attack the ball like we've seen him do. A guy like Weaver, you know, who's doing some things that takes the practice field, the game field, and gets rewarded. How, how important is that in the teaching? Process? Well, the only way, yeah, the only way that, you know, I mean, it's like we talk about how you develop players or, or coaches or people. And I think you have to be able to identify what they do well. And then you have to identify the area of focus and try to be creative in, in how you um, come up with ways to, to get them to improve, whether it be drills or, or film. Uh, and, and then obviously, as they start to improve, there has to be some small victories along the way, whether that's they move up in a depth chart, you know, they get reps earlier in the game, play time. Um, recognition in front of uh, you know the team, I think, is always something that's that, that these guys that we all appreciate. And so, having having some small victories along the way uh, certainly reinforces the uh, the improvement. Chick, take the touchdown in the game and, and build on it out here on the practice field. Yeah, I thought there was some good things. You know, we'll look look at the film, um, but he's you know trying to figure out you know how to play fast. He's got to be able to you know, work through some traffic. Um, you know, I think Malik and, you know, on the touchdown that you referenced, Chig probably had the easiest job and he kind of took a right turn and took the long way to get over there. But the protection was fantastic. And, and Malik was was good in the pocket and, and worked through the progression. So uh, Chig was, had no choice but to catch it. How your ability with Dontrell Ben since he's been here and with the full off season and now at training camp, has he been able to expand his role and what he's capable of? Yeah, I think I think we're trying to do uh, more with him based on his skill set. And you know, the thing I'm probably the most uh, appreciative about Dontrell is is how interested in, in making a role and defining a role on special teams. I mean, he's lining up and says, "I, I want to be the PP." You know, I want to be the personal protector, and we know how important that role is. And um, that's probably been the thing that, that I've appreciated the most is not only what we're trying to do and the role that he's trying to create on offense is his willingness to say, I, I want to have a role on special teams. With that specific role, Kevin's done it for so mm -hmm. long and been very valuable for them. Would there be a value to get a guy like Kevin who does so much for you defensively out of that role and find somebody else? Or do you think about it much like Yeah, that? Kevin hasn't been our PP for a couple years. So he didn't do it last year, but he has done it. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, we did that. I, I I took I listened to you and I, I did it a year earlier than what you what you wanted. So, um, that that's the quarter. You know, I mean, for that play, that that guy is the quarterback. I mean, there's protection. You know, there's coverage. Uh, there there's a lot to that. So, um, Kevin was was good at it. You know, we had Amani Hooker and um, you know Dontrell's working there. Cody Hollister's working there. Elijah Molden. Um, you know, when we can. You know, get him. You know, string some days together for Elijah. He's been working there as well. How's Hassan pick things up? Good. I mean, they're very coachable. You know, what I mean, coming out of that game, you know, those backs were were a bright spot on offense. Thought that they ran hard, um, and they both did some some good things on on special teams as well. This time last week, you mentioned Hassan had impressed you with his pass protection and made it a little bit easier for him in, in the route game and stuff. Do you think those things are? We're still true in the game with Tampa. Yeah, Atori got more of the the protection looks, the the blitz pickups. Hassan, you know, may had a, had a few opportunities, and I think he was, you know, ready for him. I don't think there was anything glaring that he missed. Um, he saw the route that he caught when Malik, you know, extended the play. You know, that's, that's pretty unique from a running back.